Okay, we're recording. We're on uh, the uh, live on Facebook. Oh, good, good, good. Here we go. Hello, I'm Alex. See, I have makeup on today, right here. It's gotten really red there, and so I put on some makeup to kind of hide it. It's it's still you can still see a little bit of it, but uh, what is it? I'm old and I'm ugly. Okay, that's the way it goes. Hey, listen, this is our Monday show. Listen, I got to tell you. I just counted up how many people watched last week's show, and we're getting a rather large audience for the show, larger than any other show I do. And um, it went up. It, I, it's getting there. It's getting up to those numbers that Marjorie and I get when we do our little show together. Yeah. So anyway, so I'm just looking at myself. What do I need to look at myself for? That's scary when I look at myself. All right. Anyway, let's let's bring everybody in. Let me make sure that everybody here is legitimate. Okay. Everybody is legitimate. And here they all come like crazy. There's Marjorie. A bad hair day today. It's not a bad hair day today. Yeah, they kind of <laughs> it's kind of looking a little you don't you don't agree, Charlene? No, I do no, not agree. I like it. Okay. He looks beautiful. It's Thank better. you, Charlene. Thank you. You're welcome. Listen, I think I'm you're having a bad hair day, Alex. There we go. There's one rule in life. Never argue with your wife. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's see here. Charlie's here. People who tolerate me. What? On a daily on a basis. daily basis. Yeah. They're the real heroes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Charlene, thank you for being here. We appreciate it. Uh, oh, look who's here. Edward Berger. That's right. <laughs> yeah, okay. John Ewing is here. Our old friend Paul Levin out there in, um, where, where are you again? You're not in Cleveland. You're in <laughs> Oshawa. Yeah, something like that. Akron, Ohio. Well, I was close, I guess. Uh, <laughs> hello, to, hello to Andrew Deutsch, who has joined us once again. We appreciate you, uh, Andrew. You too. Uh, and uh, happy birthday, John. Yes, happy birthday, John. Yeah, happy birthday, yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Appreciated the shout out yesterday. Thank you, guys. How do you get? Yeah. How do you guys all know it's his birthday? Facebook. On Facebook. He was in uh, the New York Times. Okay. <laughs> I don't follow anybody on Facebook. I'm I'm kind of weird that way. Here comes uh, Mike Chisholm. He's going to join us. Uh, where's Leo Len Lafrisco today? I guess he's not uh, available. I guess it's a holiday. <laughs> today is a holiday. All right. You know, I didn't get anything from Marjorie that said uh, your that light is. Uh, move your camera a little bit, Mike, because that camera light is just blaring through. It's coming. Yeah, there you go. That's much better. That's much better. And, and your beach ball, you can put that away. <laughs> it's Mike Chisholm. Oh, it? oh, it isn't a beach ball. It's a superhero mask. Who, who, it, who, what hero is that? That's Wolverine. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's the Wolverine with a mask. That's Wolverine's mask. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me see here. Uh, uh, Francine Witt is here. Hi, um, happy holiday, Francine. Apparently, you're not out celebrating it. <laughs> I'm celebrating that I don't have to go back to school tomorrow. Like <laughs> I did for 20 years. Like Labor Day was always just this awful night yeah, before to school to year. School. Right. Right. <laughs> <Ew>. <laughs> Uh, but uh, you know, I'm I'm thinking uh, if they they don't have a Labor Day parade here in Manhattan, do they? Yeah, yeah they do Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, they do have a labor parade. What is a bunch? Yeah, but of it's, it, bunch yeah, it's a, huh? you know, they moved it from. They used right. to have it on Labor Day, and they looked right. over at the sidewalk, and they saw two drunks and a abandoned dog. So they said they better have it the Saturday after Labor Day. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was because of the West Indian. Parade, just kind of, Indian parade, you know. and we don't want it to conflict with the Labor Day parade. Well, it, well, I guess most people went there rather than go to the Labor Day parade. I, I so. would think this a labor parade would be like you know hundreds of women, pregnant women, marching. In labor. <laughs> <laughs> 
Vernon, have to time no, it right. Good to have you here, Vernon. How are you? I'm just taking it easy on this non-Labor Day. Yeah, and you're you're back at your home in Kentucky, right? Oh yeah. Okay, because sometimes you go off to some place to. Well, no, I just, I went up. I, uh, I went to my son's wedding, but that's other than that, I haven't been doing any traveling. Your son's wedding. Yeah. Is it his first wife? Yeah. Really? Hopefully, his only. Huh? <laughs> Hopefully, Hopefully his only. only his only wife. How old is he? He's forty-four. Really, it's his first marriage. Yes. That's wonderful. It probably will last because yeah. marriages well, that happen then, you know, people know what they're getting themselves into. You know. Well, she she, she figured him out. You know, she, <laughs> she's uh, she's been good for him. What do you mean she figured him out? <laughs> He, uh, most of his life has had some anger issues and she has, has learned enough about him and has skilled enough that she knows how to control that. Oh, really? That's good. Yeah. So she's good for him. Absolutely. And we and, love her too. And speaking of anger issues, here's, uh, uh, Mike Chisholm. <laughs> hey everybody. Hello, Mike. <laughs> how are you? <laughs> it's good to see you all. Yes. I'm very happy to hear. How does one celebrate Labor Day? Do they go to work? Is that is that how you celebrate it? Well, that's how you probably should celebrate it, right? I Not mean, us retired folks. Yeah. Nope. I don't know. I've always kind of, I don't, I've always been rather, it, it, what they do is they have two holidays. They have Memorial Day and they have uh, uh, Labor Day. And what they do is they encase the summer vacation period. Yeah. Okay. So this is kind of like the end of that. It's the end of summer. It's the end of vacation. And uh, now, of course, it will get really cold and miserable for a couple of months, and then it'll be back again. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Has uh, Morty said when he's going to come on the ramble? No, he. I haven't got. He hasn't gotten back to me since the last uh, thing I wrote him. So I can't wait to see that. Well, we'll see if he calls, writes me back. I'll have to write him again, I guess. Yeah, he's a busy guy. Morty it was uh, David Letterman's producer for how many years was he his producer? I want to say 14. 14? I want to say it was 14 years that he was yeah. the EP on that show, yeah. And then one day Letterman let him go, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but Dave, in later years, said to somebody... Or I think he said to Morty, I should have never let you go. Yep. You know, he was a, because he was the best producer, I think, that more that uh, Letterman ever had. Well, he certainly was the EP during the formative time, the time when uh, when they moved from 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 NBC to CBS. And I mean, he handled that transition, which was an incredibly complex situation. Um, and a lot of people would say that 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 Morty was the EP. It was on his watch when. Uh, Letterman rose to the prominence that he did. So, yeah, I mean, there's an argument saying that that might be the best producer he's ever had. I think he was. Yeah. You know, I mean, he he just uh, he was there for all the good times. Yep. You know, and things just seemed to change when they went to other producers. Yep. Yeah. Agreed. Anyway, so uh, let's see here. So I guess everybody's here that's going to get here. Maybe we'll see Mandy drop in. She's. Oh, it's a holiday. She's probably out with her boyfriend. I don't know. Skinny dipping. I don't know. <laughs> Marjorie and I were talking about this. I saw there's an ad on TV for Arexa. Right? <laughs> People doing this. The Rex V. The Rex V. Oh, okay. It, terrible name. Anyway, uh, and and there's a woman on it, and she gets into a swimming suit and goes swimming, but she's wearing like a one-piece bathing suit because she's an older woman. So I asked Marjorie, how long was it before you started wearing a one-piece bathing suit? Do you remember? 30. 30? <laughs> yeah. You probably look good in a bikini till about and by 40, 40. I just wore, I just wore uh, running pants. Really? Yeah. You just jump in the water, right? Yeah. All right. Well, I hope I'm not being too, uh, you know, whatever. But Marjorie, it seems to me that you could pull off a two-piece today very, very easily. I yeah. don't think turn so. me on. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen her in a no-piece, and it it's kind of, you know, <laughs> it's, uh, t t t t as you get older, 
Gravity has a way with you. It happens to your body. You know, I mean, no, she, no justice, no peace. I've seen her. <laughs> no. she, she still looks great in clothes. You know. Oh, no, I mean, I'm serious. I mean, I don't. You know, it just it all changes. You know, I'm same with me. First time I saw Marjorie, I was like, "Oh my God, she's so adorable. She's so teeny tiny. You just put her in your pocket." That was the first thing I thought when I saw you in the flesh. Thank you so much. Well, I wish you had, and then I wouldn't have to put up with her. <laughs> um, you know what I do? I take my coffee. I make a cup of coffee, right? And then I put it in the refrigerator after I'm through doing the show because I only drink about a quarter of it. And so I save it for the next night. You know what I've gotten to do now? I used to warm it up all the time. I don't warm it up. I drink it cold. I've got iced coffee here. It's wonderful. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Day old iced coffee. <laughs> What's wrong with it? Has what time to I steep, you know. A lot of things are better when they're a day old. Like spaghetti is the best. Spaghetti? Good. Oh, any pasta. Yeah, yeah. day old yeah. pasta's has got a, a charm to it. There's you don't even have to pasta. heat it up. Yeah, yeah. we get we, <laughs> should, we we get food from Italy, uh, which is Italian. Uh, 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 look at Francine. Uh, She's nodding. Yes, she knows exactly what I'm talking about. Do you know what I'm talking about, uh, Edward Berger? Yeah, I know. It's a, it's, a, it's an Italian place. And well, yeah. it's, it's an Italian uh, grocery store. Sure. Yeah, oh, grocery you're right. Store. Yeah. Grocery store. But everything in it is like uh, Primo, okay? Right. And they, we buy pasta from there, ravioli. And we oh. also have tiramisu. <laughs> uh, and and uh, it's, it, it's an Italian restaurant. You want to get some Italian meats and things like that, salami, whatever. They've got it, and it's the best. And so she orders from um, Italy every now and then and surprises me with ravioli for dinner, okay? And that stuff is better the next day. It's great the day you buy it and eat it. Yeah. The next day, it's even better. It's good, too. Now, I'll tell you what isn't good a day later, I've decided. Day-old sushi. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Plain old sushi. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I don't want it the yeah. first day. Yeah. No. No. Well, right. Well, she goes and orders sushi for us from uh, Stu Leonard's. But we have to eat it that day. And when it comes, I say, okay, open it up. Let's eat it. You know, because and you eat it fresh. Oh, my God. It's wonderful. Well, I know you don't like it, Charlene, so I won't make you vomit. I, I don't either. Yeah, I can't either. <laughs> what, what, what's wrong I've never with had, What's wrong with I've, nev I've never had it. It just doesn't. It just doesn't Same go. here. It just yeah. looks. I yeah. don't even thought of it. <laughs> yeah, right, right, Shirley. <laughs> really, just rolled up, uh, you know, with the rice and uh, some avocado and some tuna. What's wrong with that? It's raw, isn't it? Oh, it's, yeah. it is raw. Yeah. So, well, that's there you go. <laughs> that's what's wrong well, with you know, uh, did you ever eat raw, <laughs> raw tuna? No. I love raw tuna. I used to go get it, and then I would a thing of tuna, and then I would slice it, and then dip it in soy sauce. Oh man, I loved it. Boy, you, you people are missing out on something great. It's okay, but I imagine <laughs> I tried it, so you you don't know, you know you're not missing out on anything great. Anyway, so uh, um, uh, anybody been doing anything interesting over this weekend? That's why we're all here, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> there are a lot of you. There are a lot of you today. Uh, John, though, John Ewing. Yeah. Uh, 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 you were going, yes, I did something. You looked like you were saying yes. Yeah, I saw some music at uh, our local venue, and uh, it's called um, um, uh -oh, uh, The Lunatic Fringe. It's uh, music by a uh, former third base coach on the Giants. Tim mm. Flattery, and um, I was totally impressed at the quality of the music. He told a lot of stories with uh, kind of interfered with the flow, but the music was good. But it was really nice out, a uh, couple cocktails and a short drive home. So I always love seeing music, kind of uplifts me live, live music. 
I'm, it's been a long time since I've seen live music. How about you, Marjorie? You haven't either, right? It's been a while, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I used to do a lot of live music when I was growing up, you know, when I was younger. But, Did you go to Winterland? Huh? No, I never, I wasn't around for that. I was in New York by that time. Right. Uh, but I did the Fillmore East here a lot, you know. Yeah. And um, uh, I got fired here in New York. <laughs> I was going to say which one. <laughs> um, but I got fired from WMCA, and there was a lot of protest about it. And um, one day, right after this happened, I'm driving past the Fillmore East. And on the marquee, it says, Save Alex Bennett. <laughs> and that's that's, cool. You, that's know, cool. you have a picture of this? Huh? you have a picture of that? Yeah. No, I don't. You know, those these were the days when you didn't have a phone with you that took yeah, pictures. No, you I had to have a camera with you. You had the film loaded into it. Yeah. And then when you took it, you had to take it down and get it developed, and they got it back to you a week later. So you didn't take very many pictures. Yeah, I hear you. So but I don't part of the Fillmore. That's pretty darn cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I thought I almost found something today, but unfortunately, it looks like I didn't because it ends before that period of the show. On YouTube, somebody put up the Jerry Lewis telethon from 1978. Oh. <laughs> and I think that was the telethon where Jerry Lewis sang, you'll never walk alone to me. <laughs> what? It, well, how that happened, I'll tell the story quickly. How many people have heard this story before? Have oh, you? Yeah. Okay. Is it worth telling again? Yes. <laughs> I was you know, doing a radio show in New York City, and, and one night I'm talking about, <clears throat> talking about Jerry Lewis, and I said something about Jerry Lewis like, well, I don't think he has very much talent. But I got to give him a lot of credit for these, you know, these telethons because he's raised a lot of money and he's helped a lot of kids. Now, the station I worked at had just gotten into trouble because somebody had said something bad about somebody. And under the rules of uh, equal time in, in at that point, there was a thing called the equal time provision. You had to send them a letter and tell them that somebody had said something bad about them, and if they wanted to reply, they could come on the station and reply. Uh, so the station felt it necessary to send Jerry Lewis a letter. Smart. Saying <laughs> that I had said that I didn't think he uh, uh, really amounted to very much. You know, I, I didn't think it was very funny anymore, or whatever I said, but that he you know, did a good job with the telethons. And if he wants to reply, he's he's he would be given free time on the radio station to reply. Well, like Jerry Lewis is going to reply to that. You know, it yeah. was pretty stupid to even send him the letter to begin with. But they got into so much trouble for not doing it with the other guy. They figured they aren't taking any chances. So now I'm sitting there. I'm watching the Jerry Lewis telethon. The only part of the telethon I ever watch is when he sings You Never Walk Alone because it's hilarious, okay? Because he sings it, and then the voice chokes up, and at the end he kind of cries, and it's, you know. So we're sitting there. We're all watching, and he comes on. And he says, well, I'm going to do my final number today, and, and this time I'm dedicating it to somebody. I'm dedicating it to that disc jockey who doesn't think I'm very good. <laughs> and i'm thinking about it and people in the room who, who heard me having said that on the radio show are staring at me now <laughs> and they saying you'll never walk alone and it was dedicated to me <laughs> did, did were there see? were there many people who came and took up the station on the offer of being able to come in and defend themselves did that ever happen i don't know but the one time they didn't do it, they got in trouble, you know, so they weren't going to get into trouble. Did you see they're finally going to bring out that movie he made of yep. him as a clown in at this concentration camp? I, I don't know that they're bringing it out. I think they're trying to restore it to a certain extent. Well, they're, they're, they're parts they're, of it. They're missing. restoring it and putting it together as a film. Originally, they were just going to have a one showing, but it looks like they're actually going to release that horrible thing. 
It was called The Day the Clown Cried. Yeah, about a German who got in trouble with the Nazis and became a clown that led... No, no he's a Jewish... He, I think he was a Jew, actually. No, no. He was a German who got in trouble with the Nazis and was sent to work the concentration camp to lead the job, children his, into the oven. His job was to uh, take children into the to the, the wow. ovens. Yeah, well, what a wonderful, know. horrible idea for a movie. The, well, <laughs> we don't know. We've never seen it. Well, so, the people who have say that it's absolutely horrible, except for a French guy who saw it and said it was brilliant. There, ah, there, right. there seriously, was some guy who uh, in Hollywood, I'm trying to remember who it was, that once he had a copy of it, and once a year would invite people over to watch it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you had to, it was, it, huh? It was never actually edited into a final version. Yeah, well, so that, doing must that been parts of it, but uh, yeah, who knows? You know, we never know about that. You know, it could be a masterpiece for all we know. I it's think just, they're going to do a double feature with the human chameleon or whatever that, that movie was. <laughs> centipede. No, was that the centipede? Human centipede. Human centipede. And yeah, it'll be a double feature. Yeah. Well, I mean, who knows? Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. But yeah, they are trying to put it back together again and uh, put it out. And, uh, you know, it could well be that people will look at it and go, you know, not bad. So, I mean, it. You know, I just think it's a bad idea for a movie. Yeah, I'm gonna call it uh, Lewis's list instead of Schindler's <laughs> Lewis <laughs> list. Yeah, uh, but uh, it's a it uh, it was a um, it, it I a lot of people for years thought it was just myth. You know that it was just a myth, and then it turned out it was true. I mean, Lewis said it was true, well, but he never reason, wanted to talk about it. The reason it was never released is the guy who talked him into the movie had bought the 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 rights but not to make it but the what do you call it when you secure the movie to eventually make it uh, uh, the, uh, the promotion uh, or option, distribution option. yeah he had the option for it but he never paid so when the movie was done the guy wanted millions or a huge amount of money and they refused to pay it so they had to stop production before they finished it because he never wow. bought the actual rights to make the movie just the option to make it well, there was, you know, there was the movie they released finally on Netflix a few years back that was Orson Welles' last film. Mm -hmm. And it was always rumored to still, it had so many problems getting out because the people who owned it were like scrupulous Saudi Arabians or whatever. And they just wouldn't release the, the footage and so on. Finally, somebody got them to do it and they released it. And it's a Fairly mediocre film. You know, it's not great. Um, I was watching, what was I watching? I was watching Orson Welles, an Orson Welles film. I was watching The Lady from Shanghai, uh, which he made uh, uh, about 1938, uh, 48 rather. And Kane was uh, 39, 40, something like that. And by the time he got to uh, uh, Lady from Shanghai, there are brilliant moments in the picture. And then there are absolutely boring, hideous moments in the picture. So I wasn't able to tell after I watched it whether it was good or not. You know? But sometimes these guys like like uh, Orson Welles, who were considered a legend, you know, oh, he made the greatest movie of all time. Yeah, he did. But then you got to follow that up, and sometimes that's pretty hard to do. How yeah. how old was he when he when he made Citizen Kane? Twenty three like, or twenty four? Right, like twenty six, like wow. early twenties. You know, wow, it was like before twenty five. Right. Okay, you know, uh, and uh, it, but it was a it was a, it was a you know it was that was a terrific movie, and uh, then he uh, he did a couple of things. Did one thing that was a thing in south america they did for the government to kind of cr create a relationship with south america uh during the onset of the war uh and he turned that out and then i think i lay from shanghai i think was a little bit after that uh how it turned out with lady from shanghai was you had to run out of money as as orson wells was wont to do most of his life <clears throat> And he was sitting in a box office 
or some in some theater where he was doing a play and he needed money desperately to finish the play. So he called up Harry Cohn at Columbia Pictures and said, I want to do a movie for you. And Cohn immediately said, well, what is it? And he looked on the desk of the box office and there was this dime store novel, you know, these pulp, ma pulp novels called The Lady from Shanghai. He said, it's called The Lady from Shanghai. <laughs> he said, sounds great. Let's do it. Then he had to go out and get the rights from the guy who did this pulp book to get it, which he paid nothing for, for the rights to the title. And they made a movie had nothing to do with the book. <laughs> and uh, um, in the meantime, while he was doing this, he fell in love with Rita Hayworth and they got married. <laughs> well, he made good use of his time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the movie is kind of a mishmash. You know, it's got a great ending and a hall of mirrors and a fun house, you know, and uh, that's a great scene. And there are a couple of other very interesting scenes in it. But basically, eh, it's a mediocre film. Wasn't so, that yeah. filmed in San Francisco, Alex? Yeah, it's Sausalito. Okay. In San Francisco, yeah. I can think of a variety of songs that were lost from a band and then released either posthumously or years later. The long lost tracks and things. I can think of some songs that were awesome. Are there any movies that uh, were lost and then they were found and they were really, really good, were prolific? Is there an example of a really good one? Well, I mean, uh, Hitchcock had about five pictures he didn't release for 10, 15 years that he owned the rights to, one of which was Vertigo, which everybody oh. wanted to see. Wow. Again. Okay. Yeah. There you you know. go. There's one. And he wouldn't show it. He just wouldn't show it. He held on to it. It was his. He owned it. Uh, it was some of the films he made over at, uh, uh, where was it? Was it Paramount? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I think it was Paramount. And um, finally, they released Vertigo. Mm -hmm. Hitchcock said, okay, we're going to release them all. There was that. The, the Trouble with Harry was another one, which is a gorgeous looking picture. Yeah. Uh, uh, the Man Who Knew Too Much. Uh and uh and vertigo, vertigo and uh oh but there's one other there somewhere and uh he finally released them all when vertigo came out a lot of us looked at it and said gee it's not as good as we remember it you know it's a good film but it wasn't like you know it wasn't this all-time great what the best film hitchcock ever made you know so but um, no, they, they we we do lose stuff because they fall through the cracks. You know what we were talking about, Marjorie and I. We watched two shows, which probably none of you have ever seen. TV shows, and we've been watching. One was called um, um, Man from Mars. Man, Life on Mars. Which oh, was, I love Life on Mars. I love it. That. Wait a minute, have you seen the American version? With yeah. was it Harvey Keitel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, uh, that I've film, both versions. I've seen both were, versions. It, it, the version in England is wonderful. I mean, yeah, John Sim, huh? John Sim, John Sim, yes, John Sim, yeah. You know, the British uh, one is amazing, but I like the American one too. But the but British the American one, one, we've been watching, and and we've been watching this other film, which is called uh, 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 uh what's it called, Marjorie? I can't think. Um, <laughs> Fantastic. It's about a guy who's lived for 200 years. He's immortal. He can't die. And he's he's working as a head uh, medical examiner at the New York City Police Department. I know, uh, I know what show you're talking about. I can't think of the name of it. I, you know the show I'm talking about? I do, but I can't think of the name of it. Yeah, I, I, know, I know it too. I'm Great. Looking it Look it up. I, 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 I When you say it, I'm going to go, well, how could I not remember it? But it's the fact that I'm an old man and I forget everything. Um, but uh, it... Um, ashes uh, to Ashes. No, Ashes to Ashes was the follow-up to uh, Life oh, on... Oh, that's right. That was, that was, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. That was the one I was thinking of with Ashes to Ashes. No, no. I'm, uh, well, for, Forever? Forever. Yeah. Forever is the name yeah, of the forever. show. And it's a great show. And Marjorie and I were both saying, you know, the, both these shows were canceled after the first season. And then they were great shows. I remember I was, uh, and so, um, 
we were bothered by that. And I said to Marjorie, I said, you know, today they'd wind up on Netflix. Right away. And they'd be in their fifth season. They're that yeah. good, you know. But And people would have discovered them on a, on a whole different level where they could binge them and all of that. I said, but that not being true, you know, the, uh, it, if I were at Netflix right now, I'd buy up both of those shows and put them on. on. I think people would like them. And yeah. Enjoy- oh, yeah, absolutely. Life on Mars is brilliant. We yeah. just rewatched Boston Legal. That show was hilarious. <laughs> Worth Boston. watching. Boston, Boston Legal. Legal. Who, was that, who was that with? William Shatner, James oh. Spader. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And a yes. cast of others. First, you know, it lasted, about five, it lasted about five seasons, though. Yeah. The last season only had 13 episodes and they had been canceled. And the whole season was making fun of the fact that they got canceled. <laughs> it was, and, and they, they actually take a case for Betty White suing the networks for not making TV shows for the demographic of Boston Legal. <laughs> it's, it's really, really funny. I, it, where, it's, it's still available somewhere. Hulu. It's on Hulu. I have all five seasons on DVD. Maybe it's, we should start watching that, Marjorie. That you'll, you'll, one we should watch. You'll cry laughing. It's It starts out funny and just gets more ridiculous every season, funnier, crazier. Yeah. Inappropriate. Yeah, I remember watching it and saying, not bad. Oh, it's really, <laughs> really funny. What's it called? Boston Legal. Boston Legal. Boston Legal. I guess it's there was a show on when I was living overseas that I didn't see called The Practice. And I guess this Practice, is an offshoot yeah. of that show. And The Practice isn't available to stream. I think what I was watching, though. Here's something I was watching. I watched, uh, um, you know, I, I, go, I watch YouTube a lot because there's so much stuff there that I endlessly can be entertained. Um, and they, I was watching it. And uh, the first, one night uh, this week, I watched a show they did. Uh, they got from, like, I think it was PBS, on the life of Cole Porter, who um, I think is one of the greatest music writers of all time, you know. Uh, and then I started watching, I watched last night, a documentary on the life of Chuck Berry. But it was really a warts and all documentary. And I learned stuff about Chuck Berry I never knew. How many times do you think Chuck Berry was married? Once. You're absolutely correct. Really? To the same woman for 67 years. Mm. Until he died. I, would you think that of Chuck Berry? No. Now, he may have been out screwing around a little bit and things like that. He was a musician on the road and so on. He was, he but he, he married for life. That was one of his main credos. He was up putting cameras and toilets to catch women in the bathroom. And They say, this is in the documentary, they say he didn't do that. That, that was somebody else that did it, who was trying to find people using drugs. Mm. Not necessarily to see women taking a dump, you know. <laughs> that the, a lot of stuff he was accused of, he was never guilty of, hmm. you know. And, but they weren't they weren't saying he was the greatest guy in the world. They talked about some of his predilections and his problems. He had to have when he and I had heard this about him, but I didn't hear it this way. When he played a gig, let's say you hired him to work at your club. Before he he went on, you had to hand him in cash yeah. all the money for that gig in a paper bag. Mm-hmm. That was part of the deal. Eventually, yeah. the tax people came and got him because he forgot to report a lot of it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, he, uh, uh, he that that was one of his little predilections. He just didn't trust uh, club owners at all. Yeah, he not opened, uncommon. What? Not uncommon. Yeah, he a opened lot of the same he, thing. He opened up an amusement park called Berryland or something like that. <laughs> which he, well, he lived there, and then he allowed kids to come in and use this huge pool that he had, and he just kind of turned it into an amusement park for them. But then there got to be some problems with unsavory people coming in and you know, getting busted for drugs and stuff like that. And so he got rid of them. They say he was never a drug user, never liked drugs. 
Never liked alcohol. Yeah, you know, things you wouldn't think about Chuck Berry. Again, like Cole Porter, if I had to list the three greatest songwriters of the uh, of the twentieth uh, uh, century, uh, they would have been Chuck Berry, Cole Porter, and John Lennon. I, I liked when he hosted the Gong Show. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that was Chuck Barris. Uh, oh. <laughs> and one of the interviews I really treasure is the one I did with him at at uh, um, um, at uh, what do you call it? Uh, where was I the last time? Serious XM. And uh, it was an interview with him because he pulled off one of the greatest. Uh, scams I could possibly think of. See the one that said I have a touch of the cancer. No, that was that was little Richard who said to oh. me, "Excuse for why he couldn't do my show." I had a touch of the cancer. <laughs> <laughs> What's a touch of the cancer? I mean, I've had two kinds of cancer. If my anything could be called the touch of the cancer, it was mine. But no, a, a, B Barris um, wrote a book. Uh, in which uh, Confessions of a Dangerous Mind, which they made into a movie directed by George Clooney. And he claims in the book that he was working for the CIA and he was a hired contract killer. <laughs> and that when he would take people on on their, win their prize winning of going to a foreign country on the dating game, he would go along as a chaperone and then kill people he was hired to kill. That was Chuck Barris. Yeah, Chuck yeah. Barris. Yeah, yeah. And he and the book is kind of it is it is a beautiful biography. It's really a real history of him and how he came to do TV shows and so on. And then into all of this, he weaves this whole thing about him being a contract killer for the CIA. <laughs> And then it goes on with more history of Chuck Barris. <laughs> so now the book comes out and everybody's asking him, did you really, were you really a contract killer? He said, well, if I answered that, I'd have to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he never admitted ever that that book was a, was a lie, at least most of it was the truth. Just one part of it was a lie. And I thought that was brilliant. Just brilliant. And when I interviewed him, I said, I know the question everybody asks you about your life because of confessions of a dangerous mind. I'm not going to ask you. I'm going to believe it. You know, I okay. said, because that's, that's why you wrote it. It's for me to believe it. And he he appreciated that. Was there a forward from met... Andy Kaufman? What? Yeah. Is there a forward from Andy Kaufman in the book? <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Right. Norm Macdonald's Three years after he died. <laughs> Did what, you ever read what? Norm's book, Alex? Who? Norm Macdonald? No. His book is just like that. It's it's got a whole bunch of things. Um it's it, yeah, it's 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 a whole bunch of things that are just absolute truth and a whole bunch of things that are absolute lunacy, and he leaves you to figure out which is which. Well, if, if I were ever gonna do a hoax, I would do it like Chuck Barris did it. You know. That you ensconce it in something very real. Yep. I, was, I was taught by people at the National Lampoon how you do the perfect hoax, because we did one on my radio show with them. And the hoax was that there were concentration camps in America. <laughs> but we weren't having a show about whether they should exist or not. We were having a show about whether they were being run properly. <laughs> <laughs> And what I was told, the reason we did that is I was told by 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 the people of the National Lampoon when we did it, he said, you take, to do the perfect hoax, you take your premise, and then you move yourself one step away from it. Yeah. In other words, we're not, we're not, we're assuming that they exist. What we're not assuming is if they're being run correctly. Mm -hmm. And people then will believe this. And it was so believable that we actually had one kid phoning up trying to turn his brother in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Who's uh, the lampoon were you working with on that, Alex? Uh, uh, Michael Donahue. Oh. And, uh, Henry, B <laughs> let's see here. Uh, uh, what's his name? Doug Kenny. Uh, Doug Kenny played one of the kids who was at this concentration camp and had had his mind altered. Uh, and uh, there was, I think Henry Beard was there. Uh, Chris Surf, I think, was there. I mean, it was an all star cast okay, from the National Lampoon. And uh, I, I, they, I said, you know, we talked about it. I said, why don't you come on? We'll do something. He said, we got a perfect idea. We want to do a hoax. And they told me about the hoax. And I said, come on and we'll do it. And we all ad libbed it, really. And I think uh, Henry Beard was playing the professor who runs the psychiatric part of the concentration camp where Doug Kenny has been brainwashed. And I, I would ask Doug questions and Doug would say, well, sir, blah, 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 blah. You know, very state, you know, uh, I, I, I have a wonderful time at, uh, the, I don't know what we call the place. And, uh, <laughs> I'm really enjoying myself and they, I thank them for having treated me so well. And I'm, I'm just, I, I'm, we're all doing whatever we can to suppress laughs while this is going on, because it's just getting so hilarious, and and the people in the room are going, you know, if you can't not laugh at this, it's just getting funnier and funnier. You know what? I'm having trouble. Um, ha um, thinking of this is funny because this is the America that we're living in right now. Well, you know, yeah. you're, you're right. You may be right. Yeah. Uh, then the the idea was so impossible, you know. Uh, but that uh, I was I was taught that a good hoax, you always start with the premise that what you're doing actually exists, but then you move it one step away from that, and you're questioning its validity and whether it's being run correctly. And um, that's what I learned about doing hoaxes. And then I got involved with Joey Skaggs, who was a big time hoaxer. Where he did the uh, the uh, um, brothel for dogs. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and I got a hold of he got a hold of me and he said, uh, yeah, "You have cameras at Midnight Blue, right? And video equipment." I said, "Yeah." So, well, we'd like to uh, uh, have you come over and visit me. I'm running a brothel for dogs. <laughs> <laughs> well, the minute he told me, I I didn't believe it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I figured, let's go ahead with it. And I took my crew, and I didn't tell them. I told them what we were doing. We were going to go cover this brothel for dogs. <laughs> it's called the Cat House for Dogs. Is really what. It was. <laughs> In fact, I have a video of it on Gabnet, on the Gabnet oh. page. I put it up there. It's on the front page, and <laughs> there we go. There's a cat house for dogs right there. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and this is recreation time at the cat house for dogs <laughs> anyway i um um uh so so we go in and i don't tell my crew that i believe it's fake i i don't even tell jo joey that i know it's got to be fake okay and we go in and we do this and i do it as though it's real awesome okay and i'm sitting there interviewing joey and we're talking about it and he's got the dogs there he, he got a bunch of friends with dogs i don't know if they were even their dogs <laughs> we tried to get two of the dogs to hump but they really we we had to kind of hold them on top of each other and then move away and shoot it you know <laughs> um but we did the whole thing and um, um as we walked away my crew was going this is amazing this guy is doing this you know and i said yeah right and then I looked at Joey afterwards and went, you know, I know this is not real. But we're going to shoot it and put it on the air as though it really exists. Awesome. And that's what we did. Next thing we know, the Attorney General of the state of New York <laughs> is uh, subpoenaing him to come down and uh, talk to the... Uh, so Joey shows up at the... Uh, um, what do you call it? The uh, attorney general's office. I can't remember who the attorney general was at the time. And he was wearing a T-shirt with Snoopy on it. <laughs> and it said April Fool. <laughs> April 1st. And he walked oh. and told him it's phony. And 
even then the attorney general didn't believe him. We had to prove it to him. Oh, that's great. You know. But you get the dogs to testify. Well, they wanted yeah. <laughs> they wanted to subpoena our tape. Hey, was, that, was, was that John was Mitchell? Asking. No, it wasn't John Mitchell. No, no. I'm trying to remember who it was. One wolf for yes and two for no. Yeah, well, you're exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, it was really, really that, that that was a hoax I was in on that I really loved, you know. And the fact that it kept manifesting itself. I mean, Channel Seven comes along and wants footage because they want to do a a piece on it. So I give them our footage and say, okay, here, use it, you know. And they used it. And they went on the air and they did this real report about this horrible thing this guy is doing called the cat house for dogs in which they're getting your, and we, we had the, he had the whole thing figured out. Uh, there was a drug he was giving the dogs that would make them horny or make them ovulate early. Uh, and uh, they would give it to them and then they would have the dogs mate with each other. They were going to heat. That was it. <laughs> going to heat artificially. And now, now it's becoming a bigger you and cry. People, animal lovers are saying, how can you possibly <laughs> give these people a drug, these dogs a drug that will, you know, make them go into heat artificially. And <laughs> they run this thing on Channel 7, dead serious, you know. Remember, remember when Jay, Jay Thomas had a show on Sirius, a guy got him in a hoax with saying that he had the dogs lick themselves and it causes them to heal fast. And he came out with a new pharmaceutical product called Dog Water. <laughs> and, and he jay thomas believed the whole thing interviewed the guy like it was real and then afterwards realized that he'd been had and he calls the guy and leaves him one of the funniest messages you just pissed off you 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 son of a, i mean he just went went nuts on the guy because sounds got, like jay sounds like jay yeah. yeah yeah but you know yours all my years overseas working living out of the country for all those years and traveling hundred and something countries Several people to this day think that I was somehow working like Chuck Barris. And, and I just never, I just never, I just never deny it, but it's complete bullshit. I never was involved with any kind of co-op, any ops with the government. But my kids' friends here in the States mm -hmm. thought it was true and they, they were afraid of me. Oh, it was, geez. it was, it was, it's always been a running joke because I just don't, I just say, I'm not going to talk about that. Leave me alone. Uh, <laughs> perpetuate the myth even though i didn't start it uh yes uh, uh, we had hands up for mike chisholm oh okay okay if anybody <clears throat> if anybody likes this stuff and you want to see a modern day version of a couple of guys who got one over on the news media um you got to watch this documentary i think it's like eight bucks on apple tv or whatever to buy it it's a it's a guy who used to work for letterman named nick pruer and his buddy uh joe They've been best friends since they were kids. And the reason he left Letterman was because they came up with this concept called the Found Footage Festival. And you may have heard of that. It's it's fantastic. It's mm -hmm. these VHS tapes that they have found that people have sent them that they find all over the place. McDonald's training videos and other things that are put together into a comedy show. And they go like 200 dates a year. They've got this cult following the Found Footage Festival. Well, in doing so, they would go to morning television news programs to promote the found footage festival, similar to a way a comic would do that, uh, you know, going around the country. Yeah. Well, they got bored with it and they're both very influenced by Andy Kaufman. Like, and like I say, one of them worked for Letterman for years. And so they decided to start mixing things up and they, <laughs> they, they, they would replace one of them with somebody else who doesn't even like, it's not them. It's somebody else. The Chiron would say that it's, Joe Pickett or whatever. But then they started creating these characters and booking these characters on these morning news shows. And one of the characters they built, they booked was this thing called Chop and Steel. One of them was Chop, the other one was Steel. And they were a strongman duo. And it was the most ridiculous things in the world. They were like smashing baskets on these morning news programs. They were doing these. They got to the point where they actually got on America's Got Talent with this thing. <laughs> No, and it was all fake. It was all fake. The whole thing was fake. It was just, and it's hilarious, right? And it's watching these morning news people, these poor morning news people, try and make sense of these people coming in. The documentary is called Chop and Steel. Gray Media, who owned a bunch of the stations, sued them for it. They lost because they're like, well, your news people didn't do their due diligence. 
And these guys have created all these characters. It is worth watching. It's called Chop and Steal. I highly, well, highly w- recommend w- it. What's amazing about what happened with the Cat House for Dogs when they when they finally ran this stuff on Channel 7, they ran it. Everybody was outraged. It's what caused the Attorney General to, you know, to cause an investigation and so on and so forth. But then it came out that it was a hoax. You know, it was a hoax. Do you think that Channel 7 went on the air and said, remember that story we told you several weeks ago? Well, turns out it was a hoax. No, they didn't. Nope. And that's when I learned my lesson about news media. that they will never tell you when they didn't get a story right, really. Unless it's, you know, some kind of dastardly thing, you know? What what about the Chinese pilots name from that Asiana Air Crash back uh, seven or eight years ago? When they went on the air here on Channel Two in San Francisco, and they had made up names, some some intern made, made up names. Yeah, Lisa well, Lo, Holy Foo, ah. Bang Bing Ow, and 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 yeah. you know, Hansu Long or something like yeah, that. And they went on the air absolutely as if it was real, and it, it's just hysterical. Yep, but they did not come back. I don't think they apologized for that either. I don't know. No, no. And I learned my lesson, you know, that forget it. We handed them a totally false story that they found out later was false and they never told their audience. Remember that story we told you? Well, we got taken. That was a funny story. Funny what happened, you know? Yeah. should sure have a sense of humor about it or something. The other one to watch is The Yes Men, which was another one of these where they... They during the Bush administration, they got a hold of georgebush.org and created a parallel website just with him like pointing at poor people and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. But there's like <laughs> six different stories embedded in this movie. It's hilarious that they, they 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 showed up for a United Nations to give a talk to a group at the United okay. Nations about about creating slave labor and why why it was an important thing to do. They did a they did a bit about McDonald's cr- tying into the sewer system so they could convert our waste back into burgers. <laughs> and uh, I mean, it's 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 incredibly funny. It was like the I want to say twenty years ago, but the Yes Men. If you can find it, it's absolutely worth watching. It still holds up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you something that's hap- happened to me just today. I got a note from YouTube. They have taken one of my episodes of the Ramble off they've pulled it off the uh, off the uh, uh off the, uh, the, the my, my website yeah. they pulled yeah. it off because it contained material that did not meet with youtube's medical policies mm-hmm. and i'm thinking what were you talking about? so i it, it gives me a thing to click on and it goes right to the part of the clip that they found that somehow I think their computers found it. You know, they're not combing through it. You want to watch every one of my shows? A lot of luck. You know, <laughs> it's really not worth your time. Uh, but they found this uh, this thing, and all I said was it was during the middle of um, COVID, and every night I was telling people, and Charlie would know when I yeah. said, you know, go out and get vaccinated. Yeah, and all I said was. You know what I'm telling you? Go out and get a shot. You know, go out and get you know, get go out and get a needle in your arm. I think was the term I used. That goes against their medical principles on YouTube. I'm trying to save goddamn lives, and they want to censor me. It's you, possible somebody turned you in just to be a jerk. I don't think so. I think it was. They, they go I back to talking about take heroin or something. They find, yeah, that's that's what I was thinking. Yeah, that's exactly this, what it sounds like. This was yeah. uh, this was during COVID, and Charlie, you would have known what I was referring to, right? Yeah, because every night we would talk about you know vaccines available, do something about it. Yeah. And if you don't do something about it, wear a mask and whatever. They've actually got me on a couple of occasions for talking just about safety procedures mm-hmm. in uh, in uh, COVID. Now, I don't care if they take the show off. You know, it does me no good being there anyway. You know, but what bothers me is if they take it off because somehow they didn't see it. Some machine they've got was yeah. with algorithms yeah. saw a set of words that didn't seem right. Yep. 
after four years, too. And <laughs> after four years, yeah. yeah. The other ones, they did it with a couple of other ones. They were a couple of years ago. And, you know, I, I wrote them all. one time I wrote them and I said, well, why are you doing this? You know, whose life are you saving by telling me this is not allowed on the air? It's been there forever. Plus, the fact is that I put the live show up. It automatically goes up. And then I record the show. And I put the recording up as well. Do you think they they censored the recording? Oh no, oh, no. no it's still it's still up. You know, you want to hear the show? I'll lead you right to it. But it's wow. just amazing to me. You know that 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 uh, it's a new form of censorship that I really don't like. You know, I think uh, you know I would agree with um, what's the name the car maker. Uh, Elon Musk, mm -hmm. that there should be a place where all thoughts can be aired. You yep. know, the, it, true or not, that they can be aired. That people can say them, say what they want to say, and and I kind of agree with that philosophy. And you, you mean like Truth Social? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. YouTube is not one of them. No, you know. Uh, and when they we go looking for that, go look for the stuff that's really hurting people, you know, yeah. like trans fats. You know, okay, <laughs> these it, I j it just bothers it really gets me bothered whenever this happens to me. Why do you make fun of trans people if they're overweight? That's not uh, <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> Example A. <laughs> they prefer trans chubby. Yeah. See, that's a great that's a great story for the onion or for a parody or whatever. There's a movement growing right now to rename trans fats because of, and then you have both sides of a uh, of the of the fictitious. That's a really good one right there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be talking about trans fats that way. You know, they're, they're allowed to be fat too. <laughs> you know, it doesn't make them look good in the dress, but you know that's their problem. There <laughs> we go. <laughs> Don't they have enough problems oddly, already? I'm, oddly enough, I've never gotten any of these letters or emails from Facebook about any of this stuff. They've never censored me once. Yeah, you, know? Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I look. If you're gonna, if you're gonna have an electronic Hyde Park, as I call it, because in London they have a place called Hyde Park that on Sundays people can go on down, put a soapbox up, stand on it and say anything they want to. They can spout absolute lies. Yeah. If you're going to have an electronic Hyde Park, which I think of these things as, then let it be a Hyde Park, you know? And, yeah, there are going to be a lot of people with misinformation and mistruths and so on. But as long as people go in there aware of the fact that what they're watching might not be true, which can be a disclaimer they do, then I think all, all bets are off. Everybody should go in and be able to say what they feel they want. And by the way, in the last uh, two minutes of the show, who do you think's here? Don Giller. Oh, Don Giller. Don Giller. Don Giller. Our program. Yeah. <laughs> He's like Batman. He just shows up right on time. There he is. And <laughs> just because you've called at the last moment, Don, we're going to keep this show going for another hour. <laughs> <laughs> I was just desperate for you to change the subject. <laughs> Here's one. Okay, so Don, when Oasis uh, does a show <laughs> in New York, are you going to go see them? Or my favorite band. My favorite them? band. <laughs> I can't get enough of them. Then I love, I I love like watching you sound like off Oasis. It's so Oasis and Fish together. That that would I would. <laughs> Are you really a fan, Don, or are you being facetious? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don Option does not two. like the Oasis, and it's it's fun to watch him sound off on them, especially when people compare them to the Beatles. Well, I, as I told someone, if, if you've heard if you've heard I am the walrus, you've heard Oasis. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, uh, by the way, I was watching, um, who was the guy, the Scaramucci, whatever his name is, you know? Anthony. Anthony Scaramucci. Yeah. And uh, somebody just hung up. I don't know who. Oh, well, I'll figure it out later. Well, Andrew. George. We lost Andrew. Andrew, yeah. Andrew, okay. We usually lose him right at, at, on the hour. 
Uh, yeah. But well, it, I come on. Scaramucci was saying that you can always tell when Trump is lying yeah. because he does this. He, he taught, yeah. puts both hands up like this. And whenever he does that, whatever he's saying is lying. And I've been watching, and it's absolutely true. Other things, he's down here doing other stuff, but then he'll go, you know, I never said that. <laughs> That's his tell. It is. Um, so his tell is that he opened his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> his lips were moving. Yeah. Yeah. How, how you doing, Geller? Oh, uh, I like Labor Day because I, I, it's a. I don't have to leave the apartment. <laughs> <laughs> you also like Tuesdays for that reason, don't you? Yeah, pretty much any day that ends with day. Yeah. <laughs> Oh boy! How many bed? How many rooms do you have in that apartment? Three, three rooms. Oh, they're they're now corridors. They're not really rooms. They're corridors. Yeah, I see. Okay, I mean, is there how many bedrooms are there? Well, I guess three, three bedrooms. <laughs> but, I mean, that's a big. Three, that's a big, three. There's three rooms. That's a big place. Well, uh, not as big as yours. And yeah. I want to talk. To, I want to talk to you about that when in around in a few years. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean when I move out? Well, I uh, maybe I should talk to Marjorie. <laughs> when I move out. <laughs> well, you, you know, Marjorie and I don't know who's going to go first. That that's getting to be the thing. It's very depressing around here. Are you taking <laughs> money on it yet? Huh? Are you taking money on it? No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's there is money on it. If I go, she gets it all, and if he she goes, I get it all. So <laughs> what's you know. the over under on this thing? The over under? Uh, yeah. I don't know. You know, I mean, I I see people living to be eighty five and things like that, and you know, well, there's ninety seven, so you got time. Uh, uh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Anyway. Uh, now when when did you when did you move into the into your place? We moved in here in um, um, 2010, 1876. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 2010, 2009, I think. Where were you living before that? We were living down in the uh, uh, on Houston Street. Yeah. Um, Why did you move? Um, well, it was a I, small apartment. Marjorie and I were going to move in together so mm -hmm. we figured she was working i was working we had this big chunk of money and we could afford a decent place mm -hmm. so we found this and this is where we resided and, and where, where were you, where were you living marjorie i have a place at um 144th and riverside okay. she owns it she owns it i, own it. I rent it out this, yeah. this all goes into the blog Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she has she has her you know she has her own apartment that she owns. And I, yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say I, I I've lived here since seventy nine and and there's no way I could afford to to move anywhere else in this city. Mm. There's no way you could afford to just move all that stuff somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. You know, if we ever moved out of here, I don't. I, I'm leaving it all here. Somebody has a studio for. Yeah, it. the best thing to do is just walk out. Yeah. <laughs> And that would be nice because then we move into an apartment and it would be empty. You know, and then we could just fill it up again. My, my <laughs> there was a neighbor across the hall from me. Uh, her name was Annette. She was in her mid 80s and she passed away in 2009. She had lived there since 1970. And her relatives and me and, and another tenant, we cleaned out the place and, and we saw. What the place looked like when it was empty, as if it was 1970. Wow, wow, that was uninteresting. <laughs> Not capsule. Is it? No, it's interesting enough. You know. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's terrific. Anyway, hey, listen, we've run out of time here. That silenced everybody. Yeah. Well, you brought the you uh, you turned on yeah. the grinding halt alarm. You know. <laughs> you turned on the grinding halt alarm. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm good at that. <laughs> you're, you're good at that. 
He always calls it the last minute on the nighttime show, like one minute left. <laughs> you know, and he's got I thought, I thought, what? I thought about it on Friday because I heard you guys talking about me. But I figured, <laughs> man, it'd be best if I didn't. So. <laughs> that night I said, well, we should be hearing from Giller any minute. Any minute now. <laughs> Real pal you are, Don. He's the pal I've never met. You're the pal <laughs> I never wanted. <laughs> yeah. okay, well, that's the answer why we've never met. Yeah. Anyway, thank you so much, Marjorie Miller, for being here. What's for dinner? Oh, Chinese, you ordered out for Chinese. Chinese. She never cooks anymore. No, that's uh, not. Uh, thank you very much, Charlie. Uh, and, uh, of course, Charlene, great having you here. Edward Berger. Oh, I mean, not yet. Not yet. I, I just saw you and then I, you know, who isn't here also? Uh, um, Brian. Huh? But a couple Brian, of Brian, Mandy. Mandy, yeah. It is a holiday. Yeah, it's a holiday. Uh, thanks uh, to John Ewing. Thanks to Paul Levin. Uh, thanks to Francine Witt. Thanks to the ever wonderful Vernon Nunn <laughs> and um, his brother Vernon Sum. Uh, <laughs> and of course, Mike uh, Chisholm. Thank you so much, Michael. I appreciate it. Uh, peace and love. Yes, uh, peace and love to you too. Len LaFrisco. Why do we have to keep meeting this way? I don't know. <laughs> And mm -hmm. Don, Don Giller, who, uh, who, if you get, go onto YouTube, you'll see his name pop up any number of times. Yeah, you know? <laughs> basically, uh, you know what I saw you did? You did a uh, uh, Tom Snyder video. I've, I've oh, done wow. several of them. Yeah, yeah. I like that guy. I remember that guy. He's good. Yeah. Can I can I ask one 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 last question to Marjorie? Um, how much how much are you renting your your that apartment up in? Uh, 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 Twenty four hundred. I'll stay here. <laughs> Bye. And with that, we go to our old friend Edward Berger, who's going to sign us all off by saying, "That's all, folks." Okay. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. See you next week. Yeah. Uh,